Hi, I'm Peter Boyles, of course, radio talk show host, Saturday morning, 9 a.m., right down the hall from where we are right now on 710 KNUS. And lucky enough to do something that we have dubbed the shoot. Goes back to Mark Crowley, who's behind the cameras this morning, and as, as well as Kelly Michaels and Brian, Brian Taylor. And they allowed me to bring this about, and it's been wonderful. We've had professional wrestlers, we've had other media people, and then many, many people have written books that I think to me are really impressive. About three months ago, I actually bought this book, which shows you how, <laughs> in, in this business, nobody buys books. And Thomas Mayer is with us. He's in New York. The book is Mafia Spies and about the CIA, the gangsters, the Kennedys and the Castros and the Cold War and Khrushchev and everything that happens. And to me, I believe he's capsulized. Here's the truth and do with it as you may. Thomas, thanks for doing the show. Welcome to the shoot. Well, it's my pleasure and honor. Thank you so much, Peter. I, I said this to you, we're talking before we began. What's and thank you for buying the book too, Peter. Yeah, no, I, I, and I, and I, I hope your I hope our your audience follows your example. Well, your I, good example. Believe me, if they've announced, they will. Um, oh. I, I asked you this before we had a chance to begin. What's the draw? Why are you and I and so many other people drawn to this? Well, I, I, for me, it was the entry was the Kennedys. I've written two previous books about the Kennedys. The first book was about their Irish Catholic immigrant experience, kind of growing up, despite my Germanic last name, basically grew up in an Irish Catholic background. And I always wondered how their, how that background affected their public and private lives. And it was very revealing. It was a, it was a big fat book that came out about two, 20 years ago. Uh, and then uh, uh, I did a book called Masters of Sex about uh, Masters and Johnson that became a Showtime television series. But in the course of that, uh, I was talking to somebody and we're talking about the relationship of the Kennedys and the Churchills. And I wound up doing a book about that. And that's a big, fat book. But in both those books, I tangentially mentioned uh, Sam G and Kana, uh, just just in a fleeting way. And it kind of stuck with me that it would be interesting, particularly after doing a book about love and sex, to do a book that was very much on the other end of the spectrum uh, about violence. And, Unfortunately, what could be more all-American than violence? Not only violence in terms of uh, stabbings and shootings, but also assassinations and about uh, the the type of violence that's done uh, between states and such. So uh, I knew I wanted to uh, write a book uh, about that using Giancana, but it wasn't until I realized that he had a friendship with a guy named uh, Johnny Roselli, and Roselli was the mobs guy. He started in Chicago, which is where Sam G. and Connor was. Sam was the he was the uh, the crime boss in Chicago. They both grew up in the Al Capone era, and so they had known each other for a while. But Johnny, uh, for health reasons, actually was shipped out by the uh, the mob in Chicago out to first to Hollywood, and he was there their the their fixer, if you will, out in Hollywood. For quite a while and then he got involved in both cuba and in las vegas for the mob and the the mob the chicago mob actually had a casino in havana and when uh, uh fidel castro came to power in 1959 1960 he threw out all of the uh, mob owned casinos throughout all of the american businesses uh, legitimate and illegitimate. Uh, and so i i saw the relationship of johnny Roselli and Sam Giancana, both on a personal level as almost like a Butch Cassidy and a Sundance kid. It was that type of kind of rough uh, palship, the friendship between the two mobsters, but also that it was a good framework to tell this very diverse story uh, about the attempt by the CIA, sanctioned by the Eisenhower administration, but carried out during the Kennedy administration for the CIA to kill Castro uh, and hire these two mobsters uh, to try to kill Castro. And then what happened to them? And so through the window of Johnny and Sam Giancana, uh, this story is told. They call him Handsome Johnny, John Rosselli. They ends did. Up, ends yeah. up, he's now he's been subpoenaed to appear before the church committee, I think, what happens to Johnny? Well, uh, if, if, when you get to the end of the book, it doesn't end well for 
either Sam or Johnny, uh, and exactly who killed him. I I, I think uh, those who read the book will realize that I think I make a pretty compelling case, although both these murders are unsolved. Um, uh, I think we know who the last man standing is oh, in this sure. story. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, he, he got killed. Both of them were supposed to testify not only about the CIA, but uh, the congressional investigators were, particularly with Johnny, interested in what they knew about the JFK assassination. Right. And Johnny had gotten into trouble. He They found out Johnny Roselli was not his real name. He had no. spent his whole adult life. He's an illegal. Uh, an alias, living an alias. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he could have run for Congress. Who knows? <laughs> you know? well, one of the, but it weren't a lot of those guys. Carlos Marcello was an illegal. Um, right. yeah. A lot of those guys were illegal. Yeah, there was a guy in Chicago, uh, Paul Reek. The waiter. The waiter. Uh, yeah, the waiter. Was his name. Yeah. And he was threatened with deportation. Uh, and so Johnny re realized that, uh, and the FBI did find out uh, his real identity. And so um, he kind of intimated that he knew some information about the Cubans involved with the JFK assassination. And so he winds up uh, not able to testify because he's otherwise engaged in the bottom of, uh, of the, the, uh, of the bay in, in Miami. But you know, what, what's interesting to me is it's almost got your dom wrong, the twilight of the gods, the Kennedys are dead. These organized crime guys are dead. This insane lying war in Southeast Asia rages. The civil rights struggle in this country. All these things come out of this, what they call a, a fanning the flames of the volcano that was America in the 60s. Uh, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know, if maybe that's a stretch, but they all are dead yeah. or imprisoned or with one, one exception or two exceptions. Well, uh, you know, uh, much of my uh, book writing career has been essentially uh, uh, about America in our time period. Mm -hmm. uh, and much of it is the 20th century, uh, and needless to say. And and so I, I, I think this story kind of captures a lot of not only the politics, but the, uh, the relation with other countries, about the mafia, about entertainment. Frank Sinatra is a big character in this book. He was friends with Giancana. And so I explore that to a great degree as well. There's a really fascinating woman, Judith Exeter Campbell, I've read so much about. Do you believe that she passed information between Sam Giancana to Jack Kennedy and back again? Well, that's certainly what she claimed. Yeah. And uh, like many people in this book, it's hard to discern what is true and what is not true. Uh, my book has a lot of footnotes in the back of it. And a lot of that's based upon sworn testimony and documents or uh, tape recorded uh, conversations from the FBI listening to the mobsters and such. But um, it, with Judy... Campbell, that was her name. She be, later got married and was yeah. well known as Judith Exner. Yeah. But for the people during that time period, she was well known as Judy Campbell. Uh, Judy Campbell actually starts with Johnny Roselli. She's oh, in a, yeah. she's married to another actor. She, uh, they're living in uh, in a uh, in a kind of a, an apartment complex in Los Angeles called the Garden of Allah, where a lot of different entertainment folks are. And Johnny is, he's kind of the bodyguard and uh, is he better than a bodyguard. He's actually more, uh, he's a like fixer. An agent. He's like an agent, yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's, he fixes a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. For the top people, the studio heads, he's very close for instance, with Harry Cohn, who's the, who was then the head of Columbia Pictures and such. So uh, Johnny becomes aware of Judy. Judy was kind of like a young Elizabeth Taylor, if you yeah. wanted to picture Judy in, in your mind. Uh, and uh, he meets her first, and then he introduces her to Frank Sinatra. And Sinatra has an affair with Judy. And then uh, Sinatra... At, at a uh, in Las Vegas introduces her to 
young John F. Kennedy, not so young, actually. He's, he was uh, about to or is in the process of running for president. Uh, this is in early 1960. Uh, he stops for a short time period for like a weekend or whatever it was uh, at, in the hotels, the casinos in Las Vegas. Uh, and so he begins, JFK begins what is almost a two year affair with Judith Campbell. Uh, and there are a number of different, it, it extends to the point where he gets elected president. In fact, there are a number of logs in uh, uh, recording telephone messages or exchanges with Judy Campbell when uh, Kennedy is president. Uh, but then what also happens is that uh, Sam Giancana begins an affair with her as well. And it's more like a courtship. Eventually it's it's consummated sexually, but fundamentally, it's like a a, a, a courtship is in many ways. And it, 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 what, what's going on there is something that the Soviet Union was very good at. The Russians are very good. It's called compromise, and it's it's a way of compromising uh, a, a, a target that you want to compromise to blackmail them and and do whatever. And I think that was a big part of what was going on in the case of San G Giancana. He knew, he knew because of what had happened that Kennedy was having this affair with, uh, with Judy Campbell. And so by putting himself into the mix there, it came to the attention of the FBI. And so there was this terrible uh, evidence of blackmail involving the President of the United States. And that was a big part of the drama there. It's interesting to me uh, reading as Lacar said, the looking glass, look in, you'll see yourself coming back. They did it to so many gay men. And that was one of the things the old KGB would do to a State Department man or woman who was gay, but particularly men. And then they flipped it back and did it back the other way. And it wasn't anything that was, that was horrible, but in fact was done when, at the same time, Sam Giancana is having a, a, an affair with Phyllis McGuire. And and that's when he brings in, I, I want you to find out, and I think it was Dan Rowan or Dick Martin, I forget which one of the I Rowan and Martin. Dan Rowan. Yes. Is, is she sleeping with him? Right. And that, that was one of his conditions to go to work on Castro. How crazy is that? Well, it was really crazy. What yeah. was going on um, uh, was that down in Florida, the CIA had already launched this effort to try to kill Castro. And yeah. Sam was down in Florida with Johnny Roselli yeah. when he got wind of the fact that his girlfriend, Phyllis McGuire, was somehow making time, I guess that was the phrase back then, uh, with Dan Rowan, this actor, and never. And Sam is furiously jealous. And the CIA tries to calm him and Roselli tries to calm him down. And so what they wind up doing is, is eventually Sam agrees that, uh, that he should, he'll stay in Florida and helping the CIA. But what happens is, and it's a long story, it's all in the book, various, through various different parties, they get two detectives to go into yeah. Yeah. Dan Rowan's uh, hotel room and they're gonna bug Ro Rowan's hotel room to see if it's really true that there's some type of affair going on with Phyllis McGuire. And in doing so, the maid comes by and, and the maid calls the sheriff <laughs> and they wind up catching the detectives and then the sheriff lets the FBI know about it. And then they cough up various different things, including the person that was kind of the the cutout, they call him, a guy named Robert May, who was working for Howard Hughes. He was, also, met Mayo. he was the buffer between the CIA and the two mobsters. The CIA didn't want to have a direct connection with the mobsters. Uh, they really wanted a middleman, if you will. And his, his name was Robert Mayu. And Mayu, he was the one who arranged the detectives in Las Vegas. And so uh, so all this, all the... Uh, the the, uh, the yarn begins to unravel on this story and and more and more the FBI is aware of what's going on. I had this experience of doing radio is I met Robert Mayhew and he he wrote a book called Next to Use. Sure. Right. And it was it was pretty buttered up. Yeah. And then I met the Giancanas and they they're the ones that wrote the book Double Cross. Right. That's Antoinette, his oldest and, daughter. Well no, I may then I meet Antoinette. <laughs> And, yes. Oh, yes. 
And I'm, I'm talking to Antoinette, who is, and I said, well, what did you think your father did for a living? Which was, you know, and she said, she does a blank. And then she said, we were in the hospitality business. <laughs> and I went, yeah. okay, I'll let off, you know. <laughs> but the, it was his, it was his nephew and his younger brother wrote Double Cross. Right, and and uh, boy, I mean, Mayhew did not like that book. But yeah. what they say, it came to pass. There's a hell of a lot of truth to that. Let me let me back because I'm one of these guys that believes if you can understand Cuba, Fidel Castro, the Bay of Pigs, Khrushchev, Cuban Missile Crisis, it's a it's a place you unlock. And you open up that door and then you say, OK, this is what happened. So after pigs, then it just flies apart. And did, do you think that Jack Kennedy, as it was Alpha 66, Omega 7, all those groups, and they said Jack Kennedy chickened out. Did Jack Kennedy chicken out at pigs? Well, I, I, he was only a few months into his presidency. Yeah. He kind of inherits this, uh, yeah. this plan. And uh, he, in the middle of it, he's basically being advised, if you go ahead and, and bring in bombers, yeah. uh, that you're going to be essentially creating World War III with the yeah. Soviets. And so if you are in his shoes as a brand new president, you can understand why he's pulling back. I think he kind of belatedly realized that he'd been sold a goods, a bill of goods by Alan Dulles. The oh, head yeah. Head of the CIA. Yeah. Uh, and so he decided he was going to get rid of Dulles as soon as possible. And that was the upshot of that. Um, and, and I think it's a lesson for uh, uh, a lot of presidents. But, you know, it also wound up in the Cuban Missile Crisis because the, take, the takeaway for Khrushchev, who was the head of the Soviet Union then, was that Kennedy was weak, that Kennedy, that we can yeah. bring in missiles and we can do whatever we want now in Cuba. Uh, and, uh, and that led uh, to the missile crisis, which was the closest that we have ever come to I agree. annihilation. But what people, I met Khrushchev's son and they did a book and he was remarkable. And when you really looked at it, the United States has missiles in Turkey, Jupiter seas, and it's a deal, it's a trade. So Jack Kennedy recognizes the right to have this government in Havana they remove the Jupiter C missiles, and so they take the Soviet missiles out of Cuba, and then it's game on. And um, and for whatever begins of organized crime, where do you think organized crime and the CIA first meet? Because there are plenty of people that say, when it was the OSS, they were all in bed during the Second World War in Italy and Sicily and the and the and the, and the, uh, the docks in New York City. Uh, Lucky Luciano's in. Uh, Denimore or something, and they're making deals. Where do you think, those, Thomas, where do those deals begin? Well, I think in World War II, uh, particularly with the OSS, uh, uh, they were inclined to take help wherever they could get help. Very good, yeah. A very different set of circumstances here, though. This is a, a, a plan that the CIA uh, uh, initiated with the approval of the White House. This emanates oh, from- Oh, absolutely. The, so this is their baby. And they are hiring out, if you will, uh, part of the effort to get rid of Castro, uh, which is not unlike for a modern or audience, more like uh, Osama bin Laden or whoever the current boogeyman is at the time. And, 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 and not to limit, not to uh, 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 demean or, or to uh, li uh, uh, oh. underestimate the oh. impact of both those characters, that both uh, evil and and I think people with Castro uh, were initially thinking that he was a reformist and he came to the United yeah. States and very quickly became a uh, he clearly became a despot uh, with firing squads and was trained by the Soviets mm -hmm. uh, to become uh, set up his own spy agency not only in Cuba mm -hmm. but in the United States as well he had a lot of different spies and informants. And that becomes part of the story as well in, in Mafia Spies. They, they know that Pigs is coming. I mean, now we can read their side of it. They're aware that the invasion's on its way. And somebody's already gotten into the American system and, and knows it. So yeah. they're waiting for them when they show up. Definitely. One of the things that uh, 
I think really helped Mafia Spies, my book, mm -hmm. is the uh, disclosure of a lot of these JFK papers yeah. uh, that President Trump uh, allowed during his time period. And I know Biden recently has allowed another batch, and there's still some that are confidential. But uh, uh, they were helpful, not because there was any one particular smoking gun, as they say, or any particular thing, but there was a lot of little detail that really uh, illuminated to me, at least my eyes, uh, just how much the, the Castro had infiltrated Southern Florida Absolutely. with various different informers and yeah. so and so he knew when people there were all these attempts to kill Castro, not only with Johnny Roselli and, and San Giancana, but with a number of other attempts by Cuban exiles and others in this uh, involved with the CIA, and uh, they uh, were rebuffed constantly. I mean, Castro died at a close to age ninety. I think it was age ninety. Died oh, yeah. as an old man. So there's there's literally dozens of uh, assassination attempts at Castro. And how does he manage to avoid it? Well, it's it's not divine intervention. I can no. basically no. assure you of that. It was the fact that he often knew where where it was coming, including the invasion at the Bay of Pigs. Yeah, they yeah. were all set and waiting for that invasion. They knew it was there are these stories that in the aftermath of the failure at Pigs, then these groups emerge, Alpha 66, Omega 7, the Mongoose people, and they get into prisons, they recruit, uh, they're all black budget operations. And one of the things that's always struck me is how many of those guys end up with Nixon and Watergate. You see them again, Felix Rodriguez and all those guys, they were, they were all CIA guys. And they were, they were who? Well, a lot of the Cubans felt that the Democratic Party uh, either betrayed them uh, in, in regards to the Bay of Pigs or that they were somehow s s uh, uh, cajoled or, or schnookered, I guess. Is the, yeah, the yeah, that's a good one. Schnookered by, uh, by Castro. And, and uh, they had been, their lives had been completely disrupted. Uh, they were exiles from their own country. Uh, and they hated, oh. hated Castro, and so the Republican Party uh, uh, was a home, became a home for them. Even though uh, a lot of Hispanic immigrants, most Hispanic immigrants, became Democrats in this country, the Cubans were an exception. That's still the case. What, what's interesting to me, and I use like uh, Gotterdam wrong, Jack Kennedy dies, or murdered, hit, and Lyndon Johnson takes the presidency. And John Rosselli and all these other people get killed. I mean, if what I read is true, that they shoot uh, Sam Giancana around the mouth, which was the mark of the squealer, you're not gonna talk. And then it all collapses, like we talked about. It's the you know, twilight of the gods. Now Lyndon Johnson's got Vietnam, Lyndon Johnson's got civil rights, war and poverty. We're not talking about this. And at that point, Castro is secure. Well, you know, Mafia Spies, as I mentioned, is kind of like a mm. window. When you do a historical mm. book like this, you want you want to look for a framework, uh, particularly if there's an element of biography involved in it. So to me, I, I mentioned before Butch Cassidy and the Sundance. Yeah, no. But it kind of reminded me, you know, these were guys, these were cowboy outlaws, uh, not on horses. Uh, they, they Their getaways were on planes rather than horses. You know, these were, and they were two very different guys. Uh, Johnny was like this Casanova type of guy. Handsome. And Sam Giancana was a guy who actually liked being married. Uh, and, and his wife dropped dead, screaming yeah. Antoinette, the uh, oldest daughter. Yeah. And so he, uh, I, I think there's that phrase of, uh, it's uh, the Madonna whore, theory, this a psychological view of men that either men put women up on pedestals or they, they treat them in a uh, uh, 
just an honorable way. Uh, and so, you know, that was the case with, with Gene Kana. Roselli, though, he was married for about five minutes to an actress. Yeah, yeah. Fundamentally, what was amazing to me was he's a very, as you said, he's he was known as Handsome Johnny. Handsome Johnny. And I, 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 the, most of the photos of Johnny are mug shots and such. They don't really do him justice uh, from what I gather. But from from everything that I've I've read and have seen and, and heard, uh, he uh, was a very handsome guy who dated people like Donna Reed. Oh, Lana, Lana, Turner. Lana Turner, Lana Turner, all yeah, these yeah, other yeah, different yeah, characters, yeah, yeah. Uh, and even with Judy X, uh, with Judy uh, uh, Campbell Exner, uh, that we talk about, uh, you know, he's he understands her far better than than either Sinatra or Sam Giancana, his pal. He he actually likes women. He doesn't, uh, and, and it's an intriguing view of women that he has. So it, it, it's really like the uh, two different archetypes of men. The the guy who likes to be married, but then has a girlfriend on the side that he treats in another different way. Um, kind of like uh, the guy uh, in so Sopranos, uh, Tony Soprano. Yeah. Uh, or Johnny was almost like, he kind of reminded me of like a Dean Martin. Uh, and in fact, the Rat Pack and Sinatra I think Sinatra kind of, uh, and I play with this in the story, I think there was an influence of Gene Kana on the Rat Pack and Sinatra. He goes from this boyish singer to kind of like this kind of gangster uh, in Las Vegas. And 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 uh, Dean Martin, who was kind of the, the uh, straight man for Jerry, Jerry Lewis, he becomes a very suave, almost like a Johnny Roselli yeah. character. Oh, yeah. there's, there's a really interesting mirror yeah. image Two characters and uh, others have I made the case that when it came to Ken and by the way, Jack Kennedy wiped his feet on women, uh, as did Bobby as well, and and Joe Kennedy. Oh my heavens! I mean, used women for tissue paper. So, but when it got to the at least I've read a dozen times, when it went out time to campaign for Jack Kennedy, mm -hmm. Dean would not go, and he said, "I'm not going out for those GD Irish gangsters," and then they treated. Sammy so badly because he was married to an Anglo woman. Joe Kennedy makes the phone call. We don't want Sammy because he's married to a white girl. I mean, and then in Sinatra, you know, I'm, Sinatra's probably my my biggest intrigue. And yeah. the Dean, well, I, I love Dean. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, there A lot of the Rat mm -hmm. Pack is involved with this story because Johnny Roselli was the mob's guy in Las Vegas during that time period. Uh, and uh, and of course, the, the Chicago mob controlled a great deal of things in Las Vegas as well. So um, so that that a big part of uh, Mafia Spies, my book, also deals with that time period oh, yeah. in Las Vegas and the relationship between them. Uh, and in fact, the beginning of this story, essentially, when the CIA gets together with the two mobsters, it's down in in Miami at the Fountain Blue Hotel. Mm -hmm. And during that weekend, uh, uh, Sinatra has a TV show where they're welcoming back Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, yeah, it's uh, wonderful. Yeah. It's just yeah. an amazing uh, yeah. group of char uh, amazing characters. And that's the weekend that uh, JFK uh, uh, with Sinatra and then Judy, uh, Judy Campbell is there at this Fountain Blue. And at the end of my book, uh, out not too far from sight distance of the Fountain Blue Hotel is how the story ends for Johnny Roselli. So it comes up. It, it was uh, a lot of fun to do this book. They put John in a 55 gallon oil drum, cut his body up. But those were the guys and why, what were they going to say? And I, I let me come full circle. Uh, and I'm, you're gonna do the radio show with us in two weeks for about three hours. So just be aware. I mean, this is only the round one with you. You're a tremendous, tremendous guest. Um, for all the money and what's behind the curtain, who killed Jack Kennedy? Well, I, I have never, I've done three books about the Kennedys. The closest and the only new thing I think, I, I'm, I'm somewhat boasting here, is I found a Jesuit priest who counseled Jackie Kennedy. Uh, after the assassination, he had never spoken before about it. And it, I was on the Today Show and all that stuff. That was 20 years ago. 
But I have never tried to imply that I know who killed JFK. I think that's a fool's errand. And I know that upsets a lot of different people oh. for a variety of reasons. But most murders are, are solved within 72 hours. Most murders, uh, the preponderance of them are are a boyfriend, girlfriend. Is the person, the victim usually knows the the assailant in some manner or form. Who done it? Murders are very hard to uh, to solve. So I, I play with this, and the fact that Johnny Roselli was trying to avoid being deported by the FBI and by immigration by implying that he, he knew. knew something he knew. about a Cuban connection, yeah. and indeed he may have known details about uh, what was going on with the Cubans and if there was, or even the mafia. Uh, who knows what would have happened? But I don't. And neither do neither do the congressional investigators. And whatever secrets that might have been true that Johnny Roselli had died with him in that 55 gallon arrow. But, you know, to me as a reader, I'm not in your league, but the murders of those two men, and they were subpoenaed to go to the church committee. And the church committee is the one that comes out, talks about a third or a second shooter and the, the dictaphone tape from the motorcycle and, you know, all the stuff that goes with that. The one guy, you know, uh, Mar Carlos Marcello gets deported by Bobby Kennedy, S Santos Traficante. Yes. And, you know, he's he's the outlier, man. I mean, I... He, and, he's uh, the most uh, fascinating in a way. He oh, kind of yeah. lurks in this whole uh, story. Yeah. Uh, very early on, uh, one of the first signs of what uh, Santos Traficante, he was the mob boss in Tampa, oh, Florida. But he was also... Was. Yeah. He was also allied with uh, Meyer Lansky, who Absolutely. was in Miami as well. So to understand Traficante, he was a second generation mafioso right. who spoke Spanish as his well. His mother was a Cuban. Santos's mother was a Cubano. And his father was an organized crime guy from the first generation. Right, exactly. So and... when you're running a casino down in Havana, Santo was down there all the time. He, that's how he got to know Sam. Gene Kana and how he got to know Johnny Kelly at a, 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 a casino that they ran called the San Sushi. But Santo yeah. was also involved with the Hotel Nacional, which is still standing there. It's kind of like the Under Plaza Hotel of yeah. Havana. The uh, famous yeah. Godfather scene were on the roof cutting up the, the cake right. that looks like Cuba. When, right. Allegedly, that comes off a wiretap. You yeah. know, we're, we're bigger than U.S. Steel. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I leave you with a weird time stories. Um, and I told the story the other day, we did a program, Bill Owens was governor of Colorado, and we decided to do one, one state, one book. We're all gonna read the same book. And, and, and Bill was a great reader, is a great reader. We ended up with Pete Hamill's book, A Snow oh, really? in August, about the, the Irish kid after the war, and he, he works in the synagogue. And so Pete Ham, we bring Pete Hamill to Denver. This is what my, my heart surgeon's wife, you know, the press secretary, the governor, myself, the state patrol, we're all sitting backstage and we have a sold out crowd. So Hamble, I don't know if you ever were around him. I just- I He, he worked at Newsday, my newspaper, oh, he worked oh, at. I mean, who was better? And he had dated Jackie Kennedy after- I know, absolutely. So I'm sitting there and, and I said, may I ask you, and we had been friends from before. And I said, can I ask you something, anything you want? I said, what did Jackie Kennedy believe about her husband's murder? Pete Hamble said she believed the conspiracy. Yeah. I thought that was what a story or what and it's Pete Hamill. So yeah. I mean I, I certainly I personally believe the conspiracy story. It's too other or or not, but we were talking about this to two women historians on a radio show on Saturday, this phone call that Oswald's in Mexico City calling the Soviet embassy, I want to go back to Odessa. Right. Uh, well, you know, I mean, it, when he's arrested, he says, I'm a patsy. Now, yeah. what murder suspect has so, ever said that in I'm a patsy? Uh, it's just, it was too odd. But uh, damned yeah. if I'm, I don't know. And I don't, damned what I'm really intrigued, though, is the impact of it. I was much more, you know, for instance, Jimmy Breslin, he got the, oh, uh, yeah. he got the, uh, the famous interview with the guy who dug JFK's grave, the yeah. grave. Yeah. Got that. And that was a that's a very famous piece. I got the priest. I got the priest yeah. 
Count Jackie Kennedy. Yeah. And so that's in my book, uh, The Kennedys from yeah. years ago. But I, I have never tried to solve the case. No. Much more interested in the impact of it. Uh, yeah. And also the impact of how, like somebody like Johnny Roselli, actually used that as a way he dangled that may I know something, and he was hoping to get uh, once again something from the government. Uh, in this case, a, a, a way of staying in this country and avoid being deported. Uh, well, and so I was interested in the way that happened. When they put Alan Dulles on the Warren Commission, and there's stuff in this new G-Man book about. I mean, is the deck rigged? Did they come? Did they start out with the conclusion and work to it? And now all of these documents that it's like the 9/11 Commission. Well, where was that? Well, we didn't want you know we don't want to talk about it. And I t I think you hung the moon. This is I'll hang up. Put put my copy of the book up, and I bought this book. <laughs> I was in the bookstore, and this this is like in my wheelhouse. Anything about this stuff, and. Thomas, you're a home run. We're going to book you on a radio show for a couple hours and two weeks for Saturday to, to really do it again. Congratulations. Wonderful, wonderful work. I mean, I, uh, you, you knocked my eyes out. Great job. Thank you and so I, much. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about it today. And I hope you enjoyed doing the show. So oh, Absolutely. Thank you yeah. so much. Guys like you don't show up that often. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. I'll see you down the hall, 9 o'clock Saturday morning. And uh, the, as you know, the, uh, the bird show was on forever, uh, these guys, and they've dropped off. We're going to bring them in the studio and talk. Mark Crowley, thank you very much, everybody. Have a great weekend coming up. I'm sorry, and I'll see you this week. Thanks.